So as a nine time Wimbledon champion, what's it like winning Wimbledon? What's it like being on that beautiful court and you see it on the first couple of days and it's green mm. as green. And then <laughs> it gets a bit more faded as the time goes on and it's the pims and the strawberries and the cream and the, the green and the purple. And you know, it's, it's, it's channel nine because channel nine's always been the home of Wimbledon. What's it like when you win it? <laughs> well, let me start first by saying the first time you go there and you walk in the gate and you've watched it all your life and it is something you dreamt about doing. <laughs> when you're waking your dad up by yeah. in the morning by whacking against exactly. the brick wall. And, and you get there. And my first match I played in juniors was, you know, outside on the courts, looking back at the members yep. back and you see the Ivy and you're distracted because you're looking at the center court while you're trying to play a match. <laughs> that was my, my early memory of it. I was so fortunate that, um, I had played a couple of years in, I, I'd qualified for mixed and played juniors the year before, but 16, 10, 17, I just turned 17. I qualified for the singles. And I drew Pat Cash first round and Pat was the defending champion, which meant I play out at Roehampton on this old, the, the courts at Roehampton then was the out skirts of the cricket pitch. Okay. So, you know, you know, right where the rope was, that's yep. where the courts had been laid and drawn. And <laughs> so they were horrendous. Yeah. I've walked off the court after my third round win and Leo Schlink was over there. From, A tennis rider. A tennis rider from the Herald Sun. And he says, what do you think about it? Who, you know, what would you like to get out of the draw? I said, I don't care who I play. If I have to play cashy, that'd be brilliant. I get him because I knew he had to play qualifier. So this is the year after he won it. Yeah. Which meant that he opened the center court at that time, 2 PM Monday afternoon. With you? Yeah. <laughs> so my very first main draw singles match was on the center court. I at did not know this. And I remember to this day, you know, the locker room was interesting because cashy, the locker room in that particular time was as I mentioned, Cash, Landall, Connors, McEnroe, they were still all there. And they, they were weird. They didn't like each other. They didn't like that. It, it was a place of intimidation. Was it? And <laughs> Cashy didn't even say hello to me. I'm sure he knew I was Australian, but didn't even acknowledge me. And we walk out onto court. Come on, Cashy. And <laughs> we go out. <laughs> so the next part is that, you know, you come out of the locker room and it's a little different now to what it was then. And then you walk through the sign, you know, and treat those two imposters, um, just oh, the same. Yeah. Um, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, treat those two imposters just the same. You walk underneath that and then you turn left. And the thing with Wimbledon is the crowd is all, always in place. And so as soon as you walk out, they see you and they start to clap and you then turn right, step onto the lawn. It is like walking under high powered electricity lines with that ticking noise going and your, your hairs stand up. And that is what Wimbledon is all about. It has got this sound to it. It has an emotion to it, like no other place in tennis and, and in a lot of sport has, it is that place where you walk in and it has an aura, whether there's crowds or whether there's not. And it is, it is incredibly special. That was my first memory of walking out onto the center court. I got absolutely flogged by Cashy. He, he was in another league at that point. I was 17 and I left the court going, I cannot wait to get back out there. So it can go two ways, can't it? Yeah. It could go, I'm so embarrassed. I'm done. That was horrendous. Dig me a hole and let yep. me fall in it and never come out of it. Or hello. No, no. My shoulders went back. My head, I just absolutely loved it. And th there is your motivation to want to continue through the rougher times that you might have when you're an athlete is to keep getting back there. And you know what? I, I actually got out there again in 2022 to play an old farts match, a legends match. And it's still the same. Is it really? It's, it's a different court now. It's got a roof and everything, but it, when you step out there, it has a sound because it has an inner roof. And when you hit the ball out of the middle of the racket, it pops like nowhere else. It has this purest of sounds and it makes you think you're hitting the ball really well <laughs> and hard and fast. <laughs> and I've watched back the video of this year and I've looked and gone, oh, I visualized something and it doesn't look like it at all. <laughs> but it's a great description of Wimbledon. <laughs> so you've set it up perfectly. So now you're being flogged by Cashy, but you want to get back. And then you're with another Aussie mate and you, you, well, it wasn't all with him, obviously. Um, 
as you and Bjorkman got yep. it done as well. But what's it like to then win win it yeah. and hold it up? Yeah, so um, 1993. Uh, 92, we lose in the semis, um, 6-4 on the fifth, and then I knew we could win it. We should have probably been in the final. We would have played McEnroe and Stick in the final, two Wimbledon singles champions. That didn't happen. Um, but we get there the next year and we win. Uh, and it's funny the things you think about, and I still look back going, oh, God, that looked awful. When, when you watch those old footage of everyone, you know, they jump the net, they hug, they throw their racket <laughs> yeah. up, they do all these weird things. Yeah. And so you get there that moment, you think, I've got to do that. <laughs> got to do that. <laughs> and, and you'd look a spin around and it, it, it was, it was still joyous. I still, I still love it. Then the moment you just get back to your chair, you sit down and in my head, I've gone, that can't be it. <laughs> it's, really? That's it. We've done that. And that first one for that reason was somewhat empty because it was a huge achievement. It's not empty in a bad way. It's empty in that you've hit the ceiling. Have you hit the ceiling? It can't be it. And I, I remember asking Stan Smith, the great mm. Wimbledon, um, US open American singles champion. Did he feel like that? He said, yeah, it's funny because you set these ultimate goals and then you've, hit them. So then you have to actually start again and you reset it. I would say that the first one was that feeling. Then every single one after, which was lucky to have, it was a feeling of unbelievable triumph and amazing feeling. Because the one thing that I know that every time I went to Wimbledon, I never felt nervous about when we talk about defending the title. It was never in my mindset. The mindset I had there for whatever reason was about we're going to win it again. And did. And that was the only place I felt like that. Why is that? I still can't answer that in my own mind. Why was that the only place that I felt we're going to win it again? Mm. French, US Open, Australian Open, it was always a different tension. It's like, oh, I hope we play a right here. Not at Wimbledon. I just had this amazing calmness about the place. And Mark Woodford said to me, he believes it's because of the respect that I had for it. Because he knew I could lose the plot a little bit in singles and stuff, but he knew if we were ever on the center court, I would play great. And he always knew that. He always used to say that to me. And when you win it, like, dear, like, is it, is it a four day party? Is it a couple of beers? Is it like, how do you, like, you're, <laughs> you're grinning now. Well, no, so, so the Woodies, uh, Mark and I, yeah, we had, we started this in the very first time. So we won in Copenhagen, right? At the very beginning. And as you do in tennis, it's a Sunday afternoon final. You race to the airport and you go to the next tournament. You never celebrate. That's a bit boring. So this, this particular time we, we win, we go to the airport and I think actually Brussels was our first win. Copenhagen was the next week, second. So we, it was the second tournament. We go to airport duty free and we buy champagne. Nice. And we, and we crack it. I don't know if you're allowed to do that, but we did. And we drank it at the airport. So every single win after that, we cracked a bottle of champagne. I like that. And so it was a, a tradition that started at the very beginning that went all the way through. So, so Wimbledon was champagne on the player's lawn. Um, and then usually a, a dinner somewhere in and around Wimbledon. And that's what we did. Hey guys, Howie here. Thank you so much for watching the Howie Games YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you watch plenty more clips. Now, if you want to get the full podcast from the clip you've just heard, you can see the full link on the description. If you want to subscribe to the Howie Games YouTube channel, which we would love, just click on the button below. And if you want to see more content from the Howie Games, over to your right, all the clips are there. Thank you once again so much. And as always, peace and love.